Shelter insurance has covered a lot of miles and a lot of cars and drivers since 1946. We like knowing we have you covered, so you can just sit back and enjoy the ride. Shelter insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Ask shelter agent Mark Manning about shelter's competitive insurance rates. Football coach, athletic director Don Harrison joins us on a, another edition of uh, the Coach Don Harrison Show, brought to you exclusively by Subway in the Walmart Supercenter. And uh, Coach, exciting things, number one, because we're back in school and it's after the holiday break. And once we get back in school, that means we're closer to the start of our first football game Absolutely. next fall. Absolutely. What's going on in Greyhound Land? Oh, there's a lot of things going around. We're real excited. And, uh, you know, the boys came back from Christmas break and the first day they showed up and we put them to work and uh, they had two good workouts and they're going to have a, another one today um, and uh, you know really excited as, as a staff to get to know the younger guys right you know we know the guys that were sophomores and juniors last year that have moved up and and you know if if you're a junior right now in school and you're a junior to us as football coaches you're actually a senior senior now. sure and that's how we refer to them is they're they're seniors now and so you know the guys that are seniors and juniors now they're in here and they're working out they're doing real good the guys that are in the ninth grade but are considered to us to be sophomore. a sophomore you know we got to, we got a bunch of them and they came over and they're working really hard good and deal. they're doing a good job and we got some really good guys and we got some talented guys so i mean number one thing is to get them in here show them how we work um, you know, and uh, get them around the other guys and, and get them acclimated, number one, to the pace and, and, and the things that we ask them to do. Number number two, get acclimated to us as coaches. And then number three, uh, get acclimated to the other players. You right. know, because normally you only play and, you know, when they were in eighth grade, they were only playing with ninth graders. When they were in ninth graders, they were playing with younger guys. Now they're playing with guys two years older than them. So, I mean, it's it's a little different in the maturity level, and they got to grow up really quick. But the last two days, they've done a really good job. Sometimes that can be a difficult transition from yes. going to, 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 to being the, 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 the head guy down in junior high, and then all of a sudden, like you say, not only are you not <clears> – <throat> Not the head guy, you've got a classroom, but you've got two classes in front of you. Right. But adjustments made, and the thing about it, if you've got a good group, and uh, talk about the group overall. Overall, well, you know, we, we, don't, have, uh, we don't have many, what, what we're calling juniors now. We don't have many juniors right okay. now, but we, uh, we've got a good senior class, and, uh, you know, the, a lot of those guys have played. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, Ben Collier, he's a, he's going into his senior year. He's a three year starter. He started, sure. you know, last two years. Right. So he'll be a three year starter. You know, Carl Turner, he'll be a four year starter. Nick Murphy, uh, he's played offensive line for us for the last two years. He'll Absolutely. be a three year starter. Sure. Um, Caleb Statler, uh, Sam Bowen, they, the guys that started all year last year. Uh, Cordray Whitmore is a young man as a senior that uh, has played as a sophomore and has played as a junior. So, I mean, it's not going to be a big surprise to him. Uh, uh, Darren Roddy had a great year for us at corner, um, did an awesome job. He's going into his senior year. He's got some experience under his belt. So we do have some – a lot of these seniors have played, and they, they have the experience, and uh, so uh, they know what they're getting into. Uh, but a lot of these guys that we have are juniors, haven't played a whole lot. It's very low in the numbers of that class, but makes up for it without all the sophomores that we have sure. uh, gained in the last couple <clears throat> of weeks. And, you know, they, they have no high school experience, but they those guys as eighth graders played a lot in ninth grade football Absolutely. games. And then, of course, they all just <clears throat> played again this last year. And, you know, uh, good talent, good kids. Um, so we're really looking forward to that class. Tell us a little bit about, for those of us who wouldn't know, because football has, has gone to all sports or 12 months out of the year. Oh, yeah. what, what do you guys actually do? Like it's January and you're back. Kind of give us an idea of on a weekly type program what you guys are doing January, February. Absolutely. Well, we, we're, we're doing is we are a pyramid scheme uh, strength program. 
Uh, so, you know, long and short of that is, you know, one week we're going to do nothing but reps, okay. which is about 50%, 50 to 50, 50 to 60 percent of your max okay. and high reps that week. Then the next week we'll come in and we'll do low reps but higher weight. weight. Okay. And then Absolutely. the next week we come in and we'll fluctuate both but we'll do a full body routine. So like yesterday they did nothing but legs. Right. Okay. So yesterday was a was a high rep day, but it was nothing but legs. So when they come in today, they'll do high rep, nothing but upper body. Right. So the you know the, that'll consist of probably you know military press, uh, bench press, um, curls, pull ups, things like that. So that's the kind of stuff we're doing right now. We don't practice until basketball's over. Okay. Uh, but when that will start, we'll practice. We'll start off practicing once a week. Then by the time you know, uh, after spring break, we'll start practicing twice a week. We'll right. lift three times a week, practice twice a week, and, and uh, do things like that. Um, you know, this is going to be a different spring for us, David, and, and the reason why I say that is we've mm -hmm. never had an AstroTurf field in right. the spring. Yeah, right. So that's very different from because in the past, if we've wanted to go out and throw seven on seven um, – in, in March, it was out of the question because you and I both know, being baseball fans in March, it's going to rain. It's, it's going to rain a lot. Rain. So it was really hard to say, well, let's get out there on the game field and tear it up in March so right. we can throw. And then you got to go out there on the game field. If you want to throw stuff, you got to go out there and you got to paint the lines. Sure. you got to put numbers on there. Sure. you got to put hashes on there. And you don't want the kids to learn routes and a lot of the landmark things, and we don't have those things. And we didn't want to go out there and paint it or ruin it. And the practice field was in bad shape. So... This year it's going to be interesting because when we want to go out and throw scale, unless it's raining, we can go you can out go. and throw scale. Yeah, you can go. You know, the kids can put on sweats and we can go out and we can throw scale. So that's very exciting for me, uh, and, and I think, uh, you know, the kids are going to enjoy it more. But, uh, you know, it's just it's such a blessing. Um, you know, we're so lucky to have that, and, uh, and the kids are, are really going to be able to utilize that this spring. Well, there's no doubt from a planning from a planning side on a coach's side, you say this is what we plan to do for next week. Need to be, we're going to be out on Monday. We're going to yes. be out on Wednesday. We're going to be out on Thursday, and then all of a sudden you can't go out on Monday. You could go on Tuesday, but that's your wait day, and yes. then and you say, "Boy, my whole week's messed up." So you have to you have to monitor and adjust, as yes. they say. But I think it makes it easier from a planning standpoint. Uh, uh, conference champs last year, yes, and sir. kids still talk about that. Is that one of the goals always? I mean, is oh yeah. I mean, we, when we set a goal as a, as a football team, I mean. You know, we talk about it all the time. Everybody wants to be 10-0. and 0. Sure, That absolutely. has to be your goal. You want to win every game. Uh, but, uh, you know, we wanted to be conference champs, and, you know, uh, we came out on top, and we got that conference championship, and that's big. And, and, and I, I've told you before, though, that, you know, my philosophy about a football program is uh, a football program isn't, you know, a good program is not a team that, that wins every year, has a winning record, or makes the playoffs every year. A program is is a good football program is a program that goes to the playoffs and wins playoff games. Absolutely. And so I'm really working to, to get to that. Um, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, really what the future holds with us, but we're pretty sure, David, this is going to be our last year in 4A. Sure. Uh, that um, we'll turn our numbers in uh, here within, uh, I don't want to say, two and a half to three months. AAA will ask for our numbers of students, and we'll turn that in. And uh, we'll find out within a month after we turn our numbers in, and we're pretty sure they're going to put us in 3A. So this will be our last year in 4A, and and you know it's it, it's it's tough, David, because we go to Heber Springs, and you know we're standing on the sidelines, and we got 34 guys dressed out, and we look across, and they got 60 something yeah, guys. I understand. You know, and you're just I told him. And it, it's a it's a war of attrition, and you know I was. Not re not too long ago, I was talking to a guy that coaches college, and he had just recently moved up, and he's coaching NFL. And I asked him, I said, you know, what's the difference in coaching college and NFL? And he said, truthfully, you know. Having 90 compared to 44? Well, or, yeah, that. And you know, right his number one thing was, you know, in college you're not worried about the money. So, you know, your Mike Linebacker gets hurt, but the guy that's his backup has probably been there a year or two. And he's a pretty good football right, player. Right, I got you. Your Mike linebacker gets hurt in the NFL, and he's making ten million dollars a year. Right. The guy that's backing him up <laughs> yeah. isn't very good, yeah. and he's not making ten million a year. Right. And that's kind of what what, yeah. what happens yeah. with us with thirty guys is, and 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 you know I know a lot of people have have you know said that they understand the numbers are down and, and where we're at, but you understand when we get one guy hurt, the guy behind him either has zero experience sure. or you know. 
or we've taken him from another spot and moved him there. You know, it, it's just got a lot of things to it, and the number game is really getting to us. Um, you know, going out there and trying to play a, a full schedule with 30-something guys when you're playing against teams that have 60 to 70 kids sure, on their team. Sure, sure. Um, you know, so the, the number game is really getting to us. I think, you know, uh, Heber Springs had 60-something kids. Uh, West Helena had 60-something kids. Um, you know, I think the one closest to us was, uh, I want to say, Riverview and CAC. Right. They didn't, they didn't have but maybe 40, 45 kids. So well, here, here's the, the deal when you talk us. about kids, too, Coach. It, it, it's all based on a percentage. Just say, for example, and I don't know if the number is 30% or 40%, just say it's 30%. If you've got 30% of your kids are going to be ready to go with this particular year to play, 30% yes. of your kids, well, if, if, if you've got 30 kids, yeah. you, that percentage remains the same. Right. And the percentage of, of 60 kids, it just gives you a lot more kids yes. who are ready to play the game at that particular year. And it's more, it's more people to choose from. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. And, and that's the big key is Absolutely. there's more, more people to choose from. And, uh, but you know what? We, we got some good kids and we got some good athletes. And it's like I told you, the last two days when they've, they've broken through that door, there, there was no complaining. Right there was no, and you know it's tough on them because I mean for two and a half weeks they did absolutely nothing. That's right. They rested. Oh yeah, they, yeah, they, they didn't do nothing. So those last two days have been really hard on them, and it shocks the system. And we tell them all the time, you know, you're gonna you're gonna feel bad and you're not gonna like this, but if you can get through the tenth workout. Once you get through that 10th workout, your body really right. starts to get used to it, and your body understands that you're going to come in here every day and you're going to do something. So, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to be somewhere where, where the kids uh, are excited to come to football. And, and, again, I mean, how can you not be excited to be a Greyhound when, when you walk past that field every day yeah, and you see right. that scoreboard and you see that press box and the tradition. and, and pretty neat, isn't it? From, from, you know, uh, the the 60s to what Coach Keedy did here and, yeah, and all the tradition that he built. And, and it makes it exciting to be here. It makes it exciting to be a part of it. And that's the thing is about Newport. We're always going to have kids that understand tradition. They understand how to work. And it, it's it's not going to be hard to find those guys. It's not going to be hard to put them on the field and, and see right. them give great effort. Great deal. Coach, we appreciate you taking time to visit Absolutely. with us. And, We'll continue this show throughout the winter months and into the spring and into the summer. And if you get a chance to go out and, and, and visit with Jeff and Lauren Sampson, they're not there a lot at, at Subway, but if you see them out in public, make sure that you say thank you for helping sponsor the show. And they're big Greyhound supporters, and they're at the Subway and the Walmart Supercenter. Coach Harrison, yes, sir. good to see you, my good friend. To see you. Go Greyhounds. Go Hounds. Bright, sunshiny afternoon at Dr. McDowell's Custom <laughs> Eyes Vision Care Place. It's so bright in here. It is. Mindy Langley and I had to put on our sunglasses because it's just a beautiful sunny day and it's in the middle of the winter. It is. What's going it's, on, girl? Yeah, the sun's out year round. It's unbelievable. You need sunglasses all the time. And you so, need sunglasses, and tell us why. Why do we need not sunglasses? Not necessarily indoors like this. Yeah, I know. It, this is kind of overkill, but it looks good We anyway. thought it'd be fun. Yeah, so. I thought it looked good. I thought it looked good. <laughs> why do we need sunglasses outside? Because the sun is, is always around. Um, even, you need UV protection even if the sun's not out, actually, because the UV rays are still damage, damaging. Even in the wintertime, no mm -hmm. doubt about that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. We have a display, a, a, yeah. a very nice display of and we're going to talk about some products here. And uh, first of all, let's talk about what we have on the table and and how we how we get these things. New to Newport, Arkansas. Yeah. We now have Oakleys, so we put some out on the table so that y'all could see them. We have youth Oakleys as well, and my son will be getting these for baseball. Those are um, cool. I know. I love these. Yeah, I do too. I love these um, golf Nikes, baseball and uh, sorry Oakleys. Baseball Oakleys. We've got all different kinds, so they're fun. I've I've had fun with them so far. I can tell you this by wearing these sunglasses and wearing these, 
and I'm trying on every one of them in here, and I want one of each one. There <laughs> is a difference between a real Oakley sunglass oh, yeah. and one that's not. And, and if you're good enough, which you should be able to, yeah. tell the difference. Because when you put these on, you go, hey. These it's are, crazy. These yeah. are the real thing. Everything brightens up, and it's just crystal clear. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's cool. And, it's really uh, cool. All right, tell us a little bit about uh, not only a collection of Oakley and uh, I mean we have other sunglasses to pick from and all kinds of. Oh, uh, staying on Oakley, if you come in and you look at all these and you go, there's just really not anything. Is, is can you order something else? Oh or, yeah, yeah, you can order. Yeah, there's so many to choose from. So I have I think about forty different styles, okay. but there are I would say hundreds. I mean we can get anything in though. Um, just in, ma in a matter of days. Okay. So you come yeah, in, you look at those and say, well, I kind of like those, but I'd like to know if the color was instead of white and black, I want one that's black and white or yeah. red and blue. And so I guess y'all just look that up. And then mm -hmm. if you have them, you order them here. And oh, my God. They come in, in a bunch of different colors. I, I love, love those. This. I know. Isn't that pretty? I love that teal on the top of it. And these are actually men's Oakleys, but I would wear them. Can you see that teal on there? I you don't have to can. zoom in. I need my nails done, but... <laughs> we won't notice that. <laughs> yeah. We won't notice that. Yeah, I love that teal. Makes them so Black, cute. white, little teal. Yeah. Now let me see how I look with those. But I mean, that's there the telling. Go. That's the telling feature, and, and that is beautiful. Isn't well, you've it? tried little them all on, and I, I haven't know. seen any that don't look. Look at you. Now how's that? Man. I've got a half. Some that's things. bright. Yeah, that that's is bright. bright. That look is at bright. This. For an old 58 year old guy, it really brightens <laughs> up my day to know that I look pretty cool in these things. <laughs> and only at Customized Vision Care yeah. in the Village Mall could you get um, these. Well, also, yeah, the different kinds of lenses. Um, this is like a crazy colored mirror tint, it uh -huh. looks like. You can get any color in here. Um, and you can also do prescription. Um, but. Like these, you can stick with the mirror tint, and right. you can do gray, or you can yeah. do brown. You can do the amber. Um, we've got a lot of hunting glasses in here too. You can change runners. the lens on any 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 yeah, frame. Yeah, I can you do have anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we actually send these to the Oakley Lab, so oh, really? they yeah. are warranted. Oakley okay. takes care of them. Yeah, they're they're really good. Um, I just went over. I just talked to Jason, my Oakley rep, and. He's absolutely wonderful, and we we went through all the different steps and kinds, and it's unbelievable. I'm really excited to finally have them in here. I've only been trying for four years to get. Is that them. right? Maybe They're I'll hard what, to get. Honestly, and and you have to interview for them, really. Really. I had to interview to get up close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I passed. See if you qualify. I passed, everybody. Right. I so, you yeah. And the pricing on them is extraordinarily inexpensive. I know. When you consider. What Oakleys are supposed mm -hmm. to be, and, and, yeah. and uh, if you're looking for a pair of sunglasses, you need a pair of sunglasses, even though it's winter time. And and uh, Mindy talks about the UV rays that are out there in the winter time, and Doc's mm -hmm. talked about that a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a uh, it's never a bad time to wear sunglasses, especially if the sun is shining, and it does shine mm -hmm. quite often in Newport, right. Arkansas. What right. else? What other brand, brands do we have? What else do we uh, carry? Well, I'm here? actually I'm wearing Coach right yeah. now. Um, okay. I've got to say Coach is my favorite, um, okay, but you know, I'm a girl, and um, we've got, I think, eight, nine, ten different Coach sunglass styles right now, like the same as Oakley's. I can order, okay. I mean, I would say a hundred different styles, wow. um, and of course, I wear Coach glasses, too. You know what really amazes yeah. me is, is when you, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> There's your These Coach glasses. These are my glasses. favorite, yeah, I've, I've, I swap up you know, between my Ray-Bans and my coaches, but yeah, I wear these almost every day. It's my favorite color. It's always amazing <laughs> me when I come in and when you look at the different, not just in sunglasses, the show doesn't have to be all about sunglasses, but the different frames that you can pick from. Mm -hmm. And I am the pickiest person because I don't ever know. Right. And I always let Linda pick mine and, yeah. and we come in here and say, hey. She picks a lot of people's actually. Absolutely. She does, doesn't <laughs> she? she? Does. I think she knows best. She's so helpful. Yeah, yeah she is. She's good. <laughs> uh, sunglasses and, and again, uh, uh, priced right. You need them this time of year. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else we need to talk about as far no, as Oakley um, goes? I would have mentioned again that you can put a prescription in any yeah. of the sunglasses we have. We've got more Nike sunglasses than I think we've ever had before. We can put prescription in every single one of them. Okay. Um, uh, Ray-Ban sunglasses, you can put prescription in all those. Um, 
Ray Band is a good one that's been around for a yeah, long time. Yeah, and it's really time. affordable too. Yeah. It's you know, um, gosh, just this week I've well, I guess that would be yesterday. <laughs> we had we had, I had two different people that came in and wanted to when I mentioned Ray Bands, they're like, oh no no no, and then the when I showed time. them the price, they're like. Oh my gosh, we thought they would be way too, you know, out of okay. our budget. Right, yeah. But now it fits right into the VSP, IMED, Humana Vision, um, um, all the different superior, all the different vision frame allowances. It fits right in there. Well, I nicely. know this. You do a marvelous job of, uh, of helping. Like you say, you have to interview to get an Oakley quote prescription, I guess, or, Man, or it's crazy. to be the, to be the yeah. dealer as uh -huh. such, but uh, y'all yeah. have got a great selection of Oakley sunglasses here, and Thank of all you. the different kinds of brands of sunglasses that we have, and, and yeah. uh, uh, still do a marvelous job, and I know, Thank you. I, you know, we missed the doc, I, you know, I know nah, we missed the I'm playing doc, catch up this week, yeah. so. Yeah, y'all are. He's, yeah. he's, y'all need a break from him every once in a while. I mean, well, I, I was talking with a, a good friend of mine that uh, also does a show, Mr. Ted Hall, who does a show for White River Area Agency on aging. Talking with him yesterday mm -hmm. about Doc, and I and and he says I can tell he's kind of funny on the show, and I said you got to see the. Pre -show. Oh, exactly. I got to record yeah. the pre-show sometimes. Yeah, you and really we, do. We got a pretty good pre-show Y'all have to tone it down yeah, a little bit before you. I know. But oh. no, I, everywhere I go, even my, well, of course my parents, I mean, they watch K-15 sure. really, religiously, but um, all kinds of people, like, he is so funny on Cable 15. They, he's a I nut. Hear, I he's hear about it everywhere. He's a very professional nut. Yeah, y'all have got to come in here and meet him, though, because there's nothing like uh, in person. He's, we need to let everybody know when we're doing the show. He is business. Y'all don't get me wrong. He is a, he very, is very smart, a very good doctor, but... So laid back and so goofy. So he's she's, wonderful to work for. She's Mindy Langley. I am not. I'm David Black. <laughs> and it's a pleasure to <laughs> and see you. And Doc's not here. Good yeah. to see you, too. Good to see you. And what a job of sunglasses. Folks, if you need some, we've got them here. Customized Vision Care, Newport Village Mall. Thank you, girl. Thank you. Let's continue on with more of our show. Well, we got to film early in January at the Rehab Center. And we're at Lindley, and everybody in the county and the country knows where Lindley Rehab is. Sherry Hanley on my far left, Mr. Jay Cox here. We're going to talk a little bit about a year in review, because let me tell you what, 2014 was certainly a lot of fun at Lindley Rehab. Sherry, tell us a little bit about what all we did this past year. Well, as everybody knows, 2014 was a big year. Uh, we had lots of parties, lots of events. Uh, we just had so much fun here at Lindley. Um, you know, we, we start off uh, having a New Year's Eve party every year. Uh, then we had um, a luau in June. Uh, we had bullfrog races. We had uh, an old-fashioned hoedown. Uh, we just had a lot of fun. Yes, we did. Jay, talk a little bit about the staying alive part that we did early in the year last year. That was an incredible video that actually went worldwide. I mean, lots sure. of folks saw that, and it was great for the residents. It was great for the people involved. It was great for everybody. Well, that video is still circulating around uh, in many of the trainings and conferences we go to across mm -hmm. the state. Uh, people talk about Lindley and about that video and, and how we included, you know, residents and staff and all. and. And uh, I tell you what, uh, we have something up our sleeve we're working on this year as okay. kind of a sequel to that. And uh, we don't want to share too much of that today, <laughs> but uh, it was a lot of fun. It did take a lot of work, and we appreciate you guys uh, being a part of that with us. Well, there's no doubt there's a lot of work in what you have to do. Right. There's a lot of thought process, number right. one. That and then there's a lot of physical work that goes into getting it done. Sherry, yes. talk about that. Um, you know, when we, when we first had the idea, uh, I did a lot of research on the computer uh, and thought, Lindley can do this, we can do this, sure. and have so much fun, you know, doing it and planning it. Uh, I, we picked up the song, uh, listened to it daily, sometimes right. two or three times a day, uh, and tried to piece it together um, and to get all the residents involved, and uh, it, it, it took a lot of work, a lot of work, uh, several weeks, you know, a lot of people would be surprised, you know, that it took that long, but it did. And uh, we had a great time doing it. Uh, the residents, they look forward to doing it. And like I said, like Jay said, we, we've got something up our sleeve for right. this year. I got you. Uh, we've got a lot of things planned. Sure. Uh, we don't want to share too much. We, we like for it to be a surprise. Uh, 
We love for our, for Jackson County to be involved. We're we're yeah. very big in our community. Uh, we love for for family and friends to to come out to our events and be be part of our family you know sure because uh, that that's what we're all about we're we're about you know this great big family we have here here's what i want to share with everybody watching the interview here today is that in, in in these particular events that we did last year you can see them you can see them in in their entirety on www.cable15tv.com cable15 tv.com and you just go to the Lindley oh. part of the the website and you can press on any of those videos because I tell you what they're going to be there they're not going away and it was just a great opportunity for us to come I know when when y'all had asked me could we do something like this I kind of scratched my head and I said well you're asking for a video production and I, I don't know but we'll try we had the time of our life. We come did. To Jay, it was just it was a, a big great party. The day itself was a huge party for everybody especially the residents here. Mm -hmm. I think Talk it, a little bit about that. I think it took us uh, around, what, two, two and a half hours yeah. to actually film it. Uh, people don't realize that, that it took that long, but it was so much fun. And then afterwards, after we got through filming it, the residents did not want to stop. Yeah. Uh, we just had a big party for another hour, hour and a half long, True. you know. So they, they enjoy the parties here. They enjoy the events and activities, and, and we do too. You I know. bet you do. We are so, I feel so honored and so privileged to get to be a part sure. of it sure. each and every day. Jay, talk about your experience since you got here. I know uh, uh, coming in, you, you don't know exactly what's going to transpire or how's it going to work, but uh, obviously uh, you have brought something to the table that's extraordinary, and, and talk a little bit about your time here. Well, I've been here a little over a year now, and, and one thing that I can say about Lindley is there's two words that come to my mind, and, and that is uh, Team Lindley and then the word family. Those two things come to my mind, and, and on social media, a lot of things we'll, we'll use that, that phrase, sure. Team Lindley. And the reason I say that is because uh, a lot of the things that we do around here, like the music video and the luau, it takes all hands on deck. Sure. You know, people will step out of the role of their normal job uh, from, uh, from the office staff to the nursing staff uh, to maintenance. They, everybody steps in. And, and yes, it may take away from their regular duties, but they, everybody pitches in. And so we do work as a team, and it, and it mm -hmm. takes that kind of effort. Uh, and the staff here at Lindley, uh, we, we do operate that way. And, and also family. When we look at our residents, they are as family. And, yeah. and uh, we, uh, you know, we get attached to them. And, and that's why we try our best to, to go out of our way to give them a better quality of life. And part of my job, uh, separated from the nursing side, is quality of life. That's, that's the phrase that I key, on, sure. key in on all the time. And uh, we are uh, looking at, uh, for this year's model, of health care is more individualized care right. instead of uh, institutionalized where it's the same across the board. Uh, we have great uh, physicians in our city and uh, the health care for each person is individual but what about the social activities? What about the things they used to like to do at home? And, and part of my motto along with activities is if they were interested in something before they came into our facility, let's see if we can carry that on while, they, while they're here. You know, I may not be Absolutely. able to uh, take a man out and put him on a deer stand, uh, but maybe we can sit down and watch hunting videos together. Sure. And, you know, little things like that that most people m may overlook. You know, we try to continue whatever they were interested in in their life into their experience here, just home away from home. And so that's kind of the motto, individualized care, personal care, and, and quality of life are, are huge huge factors in, in right. my job and, uh, and even the whole staff here. I know when Sherry tells me that y'all sit down and brainstorm and you really, really brainstorm, you're looking at something that's going to be key to the residents. Exactly, exactly. You know, we try to, we do get to know each resident, you know, what they liked, you know, when they were at home or when they were young you know, from activities activities to their favorite food, you sure. know. Uh, I like to know each resident and what their interest is, you know. And 
and this is their home away from home. Absolutely. And Absolutely. this is a home full of love here. Yes. Short term uh, or long term care, exactly. you can get it at Lindley and, and uh, from the rehab services. We're, I mean, just literally outstanding. Guys, y'all continue to do a great job. And I'm looking forward to what we have coming up in 2015 because the way y'all smile about it and get excited <laughs> about it, it's going to be fun. It's going to yes. be fun. Let's continue on more of a show and thank y'all for joining us here on the Business Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you. With interest rates still near historic lows, now's a great time to purchase a new home or refinance your existing loan. Call or go see Kenny Thaxton at ENG Lending for an evaluation of your existing mortgage or for a pre-qualification on a new home purchase loan. ENG Lending is a division of the Bank of England in England, Arkansas, which was chartered in 1898. They offer a full range of today's mortgage products such as USDA Rural Development, FHA, VA, and conventional financing. They offer 100% financing to qualified borrowers. ENG Lending offers great rates and unmatched customer service. Stop by today and see Kenny Thaxton with ENG Lending located in the Village Mall in Newport or call him today at 870-495-3931. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS 418-481. Hi everyone, I'm Bud Black and let's talk sports on behalf of ENG over in the Newport Village Mall. If you're looking for a mortgage, those are the folks to see. They've got money to lend and would enjoy sitting down and visit with you and talking to you about your particular circumstances and what you might need. Well, it is time for the State of the Union Address. The State of Athletics and Major Colleges and Universities in the State of Arkansas. Let's start first with the Arkansas Razorback Football Program which ends the year on a high note with their big win over Texas uh, down in the Texas Bowl. The Razorbacks finished at 7-6, and six, a winning campaign. You may recall on this program back in November, I talked about Arkansas and their fans are tired of hearing about, we're close. They played great. They'd lost some tough ones. They needed to win. They won three of the last four and played a pretty good game at Missouri and led deep into the fourth quarter before tiring late in that one and Mizzou winning on their home field. So it was a great finish for the Hogs. So the state of the Hogs is very, very good compared to where it was. You gotta remember, they didn't come from mediocrity to where they are now. They came from so far below mediocrity, it was almost unthinkable. This program was in a total state of shock and awe and disarray and you have to credit Bielema. It took a little time to get it done, but so far, so good. Now the key, on through February, of course, recruiting, and that is a big thing for the Hogs. Now, if they can get one more great recruiting class, then they have an opportunity in the next couple of years to be pretty solid. So thumbs up for the Razorback football program. The ASU football program also finished at 7-6, to six, but they didn't do well the last month of the year. They lost their ball game to Toledo, holy Toledo, 63-44. to 44. You know, I watched that ball game down at the GoDaddy Bowl, which Arkansas State's been in four years in a row. Nothing wrong with that. And I got to thinking, I wonder if there's anybody in Jonesboro, Arkansas. I didn't wonder because I knew there were. Or in the administration, especially the athletic administration, thinking, where's John Thompson when we need him? John Thompson, the defensive coordinator and the assistant coach at Arkansas State and the interim coach for two Go Daddy Bowl victories, you know, was not offered a contract to stay at Arkansas State University as the defensive coordinator. The new coach wanted to bring in his people. But, you know, Arkansas State gave up a lot of points. They had a high-powered offense, no doubt about that. But I wonder if John Thompson had been on that staff how many more games A State would have won. And I can almost personally guarantee you that Arkansas State defense would not have given up 63 points to Toledo, a team that had lost four games, by the way, during the regular season. So somebody beat them. They didn't score 63 against everybody. So the Arkansas State program finishes with one of these. Hopefully they'll continue to stay up where they have been the last three or four years. But right now, so far, they end that way. The Hogs do that. Let's talk Hog basketball real quick. Arkansas basketball in the preseason, very, very good, no doubt about it. But since Mike Anderson has been back with the Hawks, it's been 
a state of mediocrity. Barring two big wins against Kentucky last year, which nobody can do. Nobody can beat Kentucky except Arkansas. And there's a lot to be said for them. Overall, that program's at a state of mediocrity. This is their year. They have to do what the football team just did. They have to become good instead of mediocre. They have to get into the tournament. They have to win a ball game or two in the tournament. They have to set a goal of being in the Sweet 16. That's not, you know, beyond the reach, but you got to do it. They've got the players. They still have to continue to recruit. Now they have to win. Got to remember how far the football team came from oblivion to being pretty good, and the basketball team doesn't have to travel that far. They've been mediocre, not in oblivion. So if they can improve a little bit, then this could be a real, real big year uh, for the Hogs, and we won't know as you watch this program in January and early February. We don't know just yet. A lot will depend on what happens through February and into early March. Anyway, Razorback basketball team is <clears throat> right now give and take. We don't know for sure. We'll know more uh, in February and March. Well, that's the State of the Union around this neck of the woods. That's what people talk about, the Red Wolves and the Razorbacks. That's where we stand. I'm Bud Black on sports. Thanks for watching. At Merchants of Planners Bank, and it's not very often, as a matter of fact, I can't remember down through the years, we've been doing this program a long time, that we got to visit with Mr. Jim Gowan. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, Dave. Mr. Gowan, you've been at Merchants of Planners Bank since 1983, they say. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. That's a, that's a lifetime. Almost. That is a lifetime, <laughs> isn't it? A First lifetime. of all, we're here to, to let everybody know that uh, if you're watching prior to December the uh, 10th, there's going to be, a, right here in the lobby at Merchants Planners Bank, a little, little kind of a get-together to honor Mr. Gowan for his award that he has just uh, uh, been bestowed upon him, and it's a big, big award. And the award is from the Independent Community Bankers Association of America, Central Region, as the number one banker, community banker. Sir, congratulations on your award. David, thank you very much. I'm very, very honored and uh, shocked <laughs> when uh, I received the reward. I was uh, just so happened to, to be over at, uh, at the house and uh, my son, Jim Jr., sure. called me and said, Dad, I need you to come over and talk to you, to you about something. So I came over and there in the lobby stood all of my employees that were here wow. with, with postcards that said congratulations on being named Community Banker of the, you know, of Central Region. And I was just totally shocked. Yes. I mean, I mean usually, around, especially around my employees, David, I'm not bashful. I mean, I can talk, talk, talk. <laughs> but I could not say a Is word. Is that right? I, I was shocked. Because here's the reason. I was not even aware that I'd been nominated. Right. Uh, my employees, and I think it started with Terry Dillon. Terry Dillon came over and talked to Tara Salinas, our right. marketing director, and Tara uh, took it from there, and they, unbeknownst to me, submitted all this information to the Independent Community Bankers of America, and uh, and I was selected. So Absolutely. I, I mean, it is quite an honor when your employees do it for you. Well, congratulations. Thank I know you. it is a big, big honor, and those folks that I've talked to, you know, prior to us doing this interview, say it is a huge honor, and it's a it's not only a reflection on uh, uh, Merchants Planners Bank, but it's uh, uh, you from a personal standpoint, our community also. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about Community Bank, Jim. We in Newport, Arkansas are so fortunate that we have what we call a community bank. Kind of explain what community bank is and how that works in relation to the, to the, the, the others. The others. And, and that's, a, that's a good question. And, and the question, I would answer the question by saying that if you look all over the nation, a community bank truly is the lifeblood of that community, especially in rural areas. Uh, and, I, and it's not only in rural areas, because we have community banks that are in large cities and so forth, but they have such a desire in caring for their community. That, that's what makes a community bank. And we've been so, so fortunate to remain a community bank. And, and I'm gonna tell you right now, our plans right now, and I'll say it to the world, is to remain a community, independent community bank. We plan to stay independent. 
Well, independent, locally owned, locally operated, local decisions right here. When you walk in the door, you see people that you've seen for years here. And, and uh, uh, of course, we'll hire people as people retire. We hire new people. But uh, the most amazing thing to me is that when you walk in the bank, I know everybody. My bank. I know everybody here. Absolutely. I know when I ask to borrow a few hundred dollars, I, I know that somebody at this bank is going to tell me whether or not I, I, I'm credit worthy enough to, to, to get that. Or, or uh, I know this a long time ago, Joe Miles, and Joe Miles was working here, took a <laughs> chance on me, and I blame Joe all the time for the, for the financial situation that I'm in today <laughs> for, for, for lending me my first money. But uh, I want to ask you this. In the article, there's a great article on independent, uh, uh, independentbakers.org talks about this award and it talks about Mr. Jim Gowan. One of the terms that some of the people have described you as is humanly <laughs> simple. Well, what do you think and, that means? And I think that's a perfect uh, uh, description of myself. Uh, I have always been one to, to try to push others more so than myself. I, I do and I'm very involved, David, as you know. I'm very involved in the community, have been since day one. But uh, I think that it is important to get more and more people involved in the community to do things, to learn about our community. The more people you get involved, the, the more people, more things that are going to get done. Sure. And so that's been my, my philosophy down through the years is to get more people involved. One of the things uh, uh, that I, I truly believe in is this new vision class right. yeah, that's, uh, that the chamber has. Sure. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, they've graduated a lot of people. And we've got a lot of those people that have been through that class that are now doing things in our community. Absolutely. And, and we're kind of the, I think we're the talk of the state right. about things that we do. We get calls all the time about, you know, uh, not necessarily to me, but sure. to others about, well, how do y'all get things done? You know, how do y'all get these things done? And it's, you know, it's tough economic to build an economic base. It's right. very, it's very tough to get, to get new industry in and things. But we've built, we do have new industries. We've got new, Absolutely. new businesses that have come to town. And that's all, didn't just happen. Right. That happened because people worked at it. And well, we visit with John Chadwell from NEDC on a monthly basis and talk about what's going on in the community. And one of the things that we always talk about, Jim, is that people are just really not informed because if they say that there's not much going on here, they're really not looking because there is lots of things. Talk about the revitalization, the downtown revitalization project. Well, that's, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, uh, those, there, there's a group called DRIVE, okay. which is Downtown Revitalization Improvement Effort. Okay. And that group... Uh, originally was appointed by the mayor okay. to try to see what can we do about downtown. And uh, it eventually we saw that for us to be able to get any grants or anything like that, we were going to have to become a, a, a 501c3 okay. you know, organization. So we did. And so we are now, uh, and we just recently, and we're right in the middle of it right now, of a project uh, putting in some, some new sidewalks putting up some lighting Good downtown lights, that's yeah. going to make uh, the downtown look nice. And what's, you know, some people might complain a little bit, well, they don't, they didn't need that. Right. Well, first of all, the biggest portion of the money came from a grant. Absolutely. And, and that grant would not have been available to put somewhere else. Right. It was for, that's what down, it's for. It was for downtowns. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, the, uh, the effort is just, uh, it's ongoing. Uh, the, the, area over here where the fountain is. Right. Uh, that's such an improvement to downtown. And we hope to eventually maybe, uh, because those buildings, we tried our best. Drive, and we just didn't have the money. We tried to save those buildings right. down there. And we just, I mean, they're just gone. And there's, right. no, there's no saving them. And we, none of us, wanted to, to have to take those buildings down. But it looks, we are going to have to. Right. We're going to have to take them down because they're, <clears throat> they're a danger to help sure. uh, people. And so we, we plan, uh, we're working on trying to build an amphitheater there, okay. which will allow <clears throat> the community to have uh, events downtown. They'll have a stage to, uh, to have things on. Uh, Depot Days will be able to use it, other groups. We, we even think that Easter Sunday sunrise services can be held, be held, held there. And uh, we, uh, John Chadwell 
and I too both have talked to uh, various groups. ASU Newport is interested in possibly having in, in the months that the weather's good, an outdoor movie once a right. once a week right. or once right. a month or something. So there's there's just a lot of things going on there. You got to have a vision. You got to have a group that's got a vision. People can complain if they want to complain, and, and I don't. I think generally speaking, I think people don't generally complain, but I, I think. When you get enough information out there and then you go, oh, well, I see that now. I think it's a great project, a great project for our community, and, uh, uh, and I know you work hard on that, as do other people and those people on that community. Changing the subject here real quickly before we get away, shot glasses. <laughs> State shot glasses. Right. I don't know of anybody in the world that has a shot glass from every state in the United States of America. But I know Jim Gowan's <laughs> got a collection. Tell us about the collection. Thank you, David. I, <clears throat> I'm proud of the collection. Yes. I, uh, several years ago, uh, my wife and I have been very fortunate to get to travel uh, to different things, and especially a lot of things that we traveled to was involved in Independent Community Bankers of America also. But because uh, I have served that organization uh, down through the years in, in several capacities, and one of the things that uh, I started thinking about, I'd like to have something from every state, and I have to purchase it. I had to myself physically go purchase that. I had to go to that state. Friends didn't send me any of these. Right. A lot of them offered to. Right. I've got friends in lots of states, sure. uh, and I'm not bragging that. No, I've got absolutely. lots of friends, but I am saying that I've, you know, they offered to give me one of their states, and I said, no, I have to come to your state and buy it. <laughs> and so. I have a shot glass now from every state, plus uh, I have some extra ones that are not just state, but I, from some foreign countries. I have some, uh, uh, I, and I include in this one, there's actually 51 in there, which is Washington, D.C. D.C., yes, sir. I'm particularly not fond of the thought of Washington, D.C. becoming a state <laughs> now, but, but, uh, but I think... We don't want to give a little credit here, yeah, though. Yeah, that's That'll right. be a part of the collection. Yeah, yes, sir. but anyway... Uh, I do have, and, and they're not from a city within the state. Right. They're actually uh, from the state itself, like state of Arkansas. Right. It's a state of Arkansas, and it and a lot of the states have their maybe their bird on there, their their state bird or their you know whatever whatever the emblem may be. Yeah, 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 different things. But it, it's something that I'm proud of. I you bet. know, and. Uh, I never knew if I'd ever get to Hawaii and Alaska, and Alaska was one of my last ones. It wasn't the very last one, but it was one of the last ones that I got. But uh, the last four states that, that, I, that I got, I got them this year, in right. 2014. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was on my way to Alaska, and so I told Nita, my wife, yeah. I said, let's fly in a few days early into South Dakota, and let's visit... Uh, around, go to Mount Rushmore sure. and go around <clears throat> to some of the places there. So we went to South Dakota, North Dakota, <laughs> Montana, yes, and Wyoming. Yes, we sir. covered four states, and that was my last four. Well, they're all right there together. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to really? go very far, did you? No. <laughs> no, sir. Just, I just made a, made a circle around them. And, and, uh, but we saw a lot of things we'd never seen. We went Absolutely. to Yellowstone, uh, saw Old Faithful, and uh, Mount Rushmore, and and uh, saw a lot of activity going on up there in the in the oil wells and natural gas wells right, going up in, in that part of the world too. But it was it's interesting <laughs> to learn about the states. Of course, Ben is showing you some of that collection right there. And uh, uh, I just want to end this thing, Mr. Gowan, by saying congratulations on your award. Uh, you are very deserving. Uh, I, I think sometimes, and you even mentioned earlier in, in, in the interview that, that you don't look to be, uh, you don't need a pat on the back. No. You, you look to give that to those other people. But uh, let me say this. I, I think you are instrumental in where we are today in Newport, Arkansas. And it, it's been a tough fight. It's been a tough fight, but it's because of guys like you that we're still here, that we've still got jobs, that we've still got training programs, that we've got a college. I mean, there's just lots of things that, that, that we have here. And as a direct result of people like Jim Gowan, who are willing to step to the board and say, guys, I'm willing to serve. David, thank you so much. And I appreciate you talking to me. Mr. Jim Gowan, <laughs> who is the man at Merchants and Planters Bank. This guy is Tommy Bain. I am not. I'm David Black. 
And each and every month when we come to Farmer's Tire Mart, we get to visit with Tommy Bain to talk about what's going on in the world of tires. Sir, we're amongst them. We're, we're amongst them. Amongst. We have tires. we got tires. we got a lot of tires. we got Firestone tires, Federal tires, and, and uh, some Black Bear tires. What do we do with all these tires? <laughs> we put them on uh, vehicles. Y'all do a lot of putting tires on vehicles throughout the course of the year. I know this past year was a great year for Farmer's Tire Mart. Yes. Talk a little bit about your past year. We, we, uh, we've been extremely busy uh, for the past, uh, the past year and uh, thankful for it. We uh, 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 probably are our biggest year thus far. Right. And, and uh, we'll soon start 25 years. Yeah. And, and uh, so uh, here in this business, and, and, uh, and I think that uh, uh, 2014 is probably the, uh, the cream of the crop. Fantastic. Uh, Fantastic. And, and, uh, and, and we're thankful to all our, our customers. Sure. Uh, that, sure. that come in and chose chose to uh, buy from us, uh, and and uh, we we hope that we've done a, a satisfactory job on servicing those uh, those customers. So, uh, uh, and we want them to come back. All, and I tell you, all you folks that do, buys tires from us, you get free rotation with those right. tires. Absolutely. Uh, every six thousand miles. So, so uh, keep that in mind and and. Uh, uh, and we do uh, other vehicle maintenance as well. Uh, it's, it's cold weather. Mm -hmm. uh, cold today when we film. <laughs> it's gonna be cold tonight. Yeah. We're filming yeah. on the day that tonight it's supposed to be nine degrees. Nine. Degrees. Didn't mean to interrupt, but I wanted that's, to uh, let everybody cold. know how cold it is out there tonight. Uh, but that's cold. <laughs> it is very cold. Uh, but uh, we 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 do service uh, cooling systems, the, the antifreeze, and and uh, and, uh, and it's very important to. Uh, have it all changed and, and uh, get fresh oil in when it's getting cold like this because uh, oil that's, that's broken down doesn't have the doesn't have the body to uh, to lubricate those uh, moving parts in the in internal engine. Uh, so uh, it's very important to get those uh, engines serviced uh, and and uh, uh, and you know along with cold weather we get we get rain and. and uh, what have you. And Snow and some slush and, and some ice from time to time. Yeah. Absolutely. And those those uh, those times of, of snow and ice and, and, and a lot of rain and windshield wipers working back and forth constantly uh, is wear and tear on the wiper blades. Sure. So uh, those need to be replaced periodically. And, and uh, so uh, uh, so come on down. Let us check those things and and uh, and. Uh, give your car the attention that it needs. I like when you talk about the windshield wiper blades because I, like everybody else, we are those people that go out there that when you turn them on and it's raining is when you remember that you need some new wire. And, and once it's not <laughs> raining, you don't remember that. So That's it's right. just something that you need to put on your list of things to do on car maintenance is go ahead and get them changed because look, you're going to get out there and you're going to go, I, and, it, it, and I do it, and it's 10 times before I ever get them changed. Yeah. I just Absolutely. forget. I mean, once I don't need them, if you don't need them, they're out of sight, out of mind, and you, and you don't do that. Absolutely. Tommy, 25 years in the business. Talk about some of the things that make you guys successful. I mean, I think any business, any business. You're in a service business. Here. You're in a certain tire service, uh, automobile service. It's difficult to stay in any business for 25 years. Yes, and in yes. retail business in Newport, Arkansas, what, what a, I commend you guys for being in business for 25. Well, the, we've we've started out with with the idea, and I've had it for I've had this idea for years. You treat people like you want to be treated. Right. Uh, uh, a lot of people will will uh, get a customer and and get them. Right. Absolutely. Uh, one time. Right. Yeah. I want them. As long as I'm here. Absolutely. As long as I'm here. Absolutely. I want to service, <laughs> service their vehicles uh, and their tires as, as long as I'm here. Uh, I, I, I appreciate those one time. Sure, you absolutely. Know, people. And, uh, but I, I really appreciate those who have been with me 25 years. And there's and, a lot of them. And a lot of them. There's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of us out there. Yeah. And uh, we really we really appreciate that. And, and uh, but, uh, I attribute our success to uh, the way we treat people, right. the, 
uh, our service personnel back in the back. Uh, they, they, they go extra mile to make sure that it's done right. And, and uh, so uh, we have repeat business, and, and that's what it takes. You know, and the guys, and Bruce and all the guys, and, and I know my experience has always been that, you know, they let, let you know what your problem is, let you know about, you know, uh, how much money it's going to cost to get it fixed, then after they do that, uh, I mean, you never add anything extra on there. I mean, if there's something else that needs to be right. done, you always call them, call right. them to let us know, Absolutely. you know, that uh, here's what we discovered while we were looking at the problem that we knew we had, and, and this is, you know, any extra that you want to spend, and no pressure to do that. If you want to get that done here, you get it done here. If you don't want to, that's okay. But uh, but personal service, no doubt, has been a key that, that, that kept people coming back year after year after year. After year, and, and, and we're thankful Absolutely. Uh, for that. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to continue to do that. Uh, we may have some folks walk out on walk out the door on us, you know. But we happens, doesn't it? We, it happens. It happens. And, and, but uh, we're going to continue to treat people like we want to be treated. We've been here on Malcolm Avenue a long, long time, haven't we? Have we have. Continuing to service folks in uh, Northeast Arkansas, and in uh, uh, we appreciate. Uh, your business, my friend, and, and hope 2015 and as good as all the years that you've had, especially 2014. Tommy Bain at Farmers Tire Mart. Before we get out of here, remember it's www.farmerstiremart.com. We're on Facebook at facebook.com sla uh, forward slash Farmers Tire Mart. So you can get us on Facebook and you can get it all on the website too. But uh, Farmers Tire Mart, where? <laughs> 1501 Malcolm Avenue, where the rubber meets. White River Area Agency on Aging in Batesville, Newport, and around northeast, north central Arkansas. Mr. Ted Hall joins us once again. Happy New Year, sir. Happy New Year to you. Is everything just lovely over the holidays for you? You bet. We had, uh, we had uh, just a great time. And, of course, I'm a first-time uh, grandparent. So I, Congratulations. We, that November the 13th, we welcome Tucker Easton Dayberry. Which spells out Ted, so that's pretty good deal. For, I love yeah, it. Yeah, that's pretty good I deal. I love so, it. Yeah. That's fantastic. We're doing well. We had good holidays, but uh, hey, this is a time of year uh, that we do have folks that call us about their parents or someone they're taking care of, and uh, what's happened? They've come home and they have see that things are not quite the same at home as far as their parents or their loved ones. Uh, some of the things they normally do and have been doing for years right. and so they call us and say hey uh, what kind of services do you provide and and so that's really uh, of all the things we do is we need that phone call and uh, they can call that 870-612-3000 and they can contact us here and then at that point in time we can ask them questions about their concerns and then if we need to send a case manager out there uh, to their home with their family they can make decisions about uh, their loved ones so it's not a high pressure kind of deal uh, but it is something that we do provide in those case managers and, and sometimes uh, we uh, can help them in the areas that has nothing to do with us but we have the connections and we know what folks that are, that are senior citizens we actually know what they need so we provide lots of information for people this time of year and again they are, they're, they've been home, and uh, things are not quite the same, and they realize that. And sometimes they even look into our assisted living, right. or they may say, hey, we got too big a house, and we need to get them to an apartment, and we have those in the 10 county areas, about 188 of those. Or they may need for us to come into the home and actually provide services like house cleaning, cooking, bathing, yeah. and all those kind of things that, uh, you know, just normal every day. Uh, activities or it may be that they have a parent that has Alzheimer's or they having to uh, stay at home all the time they need a little break and so we actually can come in and uh, stay with those folks as they go out and do some of the things that they need to do so they just need to give us a call and then uh, I guess I'm kind of running the show here you today, go right but, answer but, uh, I do want to answer this before yes, you get into okay, the legislative okay. uh, uh, part of it, it I think sometimes we don't we don't know or maybe we don't understand uh, the enormity or the amount of, of services that you guys do provide yeah. and, and and you say you have to call and then when people are home from the holidays they do call and I think most of the times that we do call and I've been there I've done that that you go wow I did not realize you provided those services for my parents uh, yeah. or, or for my grandparents yeah, sure. or for my whoever for anybody in my family sure. Yeah, and you know, just like we, we run a what we call the foster grandparent program, we have 72 grandparents that 
that are spread out through our 10 county area that work in the school. So right. there's just a lot of things we do. And so, uh, again, we're, we're low key, but yet, uh, you know, we are uh, knowledgeable and we've been in business for 35 years. So sure. we do have a, a really good reputation. So again, just give us a call if there's any sure. concerns or they have questions about, uh, about their parents or whoever. So, all right, the next thing we want to talk about is we're really important is the le legislative session is going to be uh, in session here before very long. And so as uh, folks in the healthcare industry, whether it be hospitals or whether it be uh, certainly in, in the in-home services that we, we provide, uh, that it's going to be important that uh, we stay connected and that, uh, that they understand that we have a population of seniors that need and deserve to be uh, served. And uh, you know, they was, I've never heard talked to any uh, one that's really against seniors. Right, right. But that's good. But what we need is make sure that they continue to uh, support us, help us when it's opportunity as far as funding and those kind of things. So I, I just say that we're going to be reporting on that here at, uh, on this show, uh, you know, about what, what is being done at the legislative, legislative session and how that might affect uh, the folks that are out there that we serve every day. So that's real important for us. And, uh, you know, that's just a part of what we have to do when you're in our type of business is what's going on uh, when, in, when, they're, when they are in session. Well, when you talk about politically and, 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 and there, I mean, when you have tax dollars and there's so many dollars to go around and, I mean, it's not like the money grows on trees and oh. everybody can get what they want. I mean, you need to be out there fighting for those dollars and Absolutely. that's exactly what you have to do is stay on top of it with your legislature. Uh, right. And, uh, and just like the senior centers, uh, David, you know, those are really important things Absolutely. for people. It's places where people can go and they can eat, but also they can socialize and those kind of things are, are very important uh, to to them. So again, it's, uh, it's real important and, uh, and uh, whether we like it or not, though, that's where uh, we money breaks make it happen. And Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. We don't want to waste any money, but yet at the same time, we want our share. So. Well, you, you got to have money for, for programs to work. Absolutely. You have to Absolutely. have money for them to work. Absolutely. But, and and that, those are the folks that, that, right. that, that so don't have the money. We've been working also this year, uh, actually this, even today, uh, been working on our goals and objectives for the for the coming year and see where we're going to uh, as far as the agency, and we're excited about that. And uh, we're going to be more involved in all of our 10 county area right. as we have been for a long time. But we, we want to make sure that uh, people know that we're around and that uh, we do a great job in what we do. Well, I know this organization is proud to have Mr. Tad Hall to have joined them and, and uh, been here a year. Working. Actually, a year tomorrow. That's Is that, that right? That's right. Been here a year tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I just continue to hear great things about what you have brought uh, uh, to White River Area Agency on Aging, and, and the people that are working with you are the ones that are talking about you. So that, that means something to me. When everybody's happy on the ship, <laughs> when everybody's happy at home, everybody's pretty happy. That's right. Well, it's a team effort. I mean, yes, you know, sir. old coaching me and all that stuff, but it is the truth. It <laughs> it, is it. you got to have everybody working together. Mr. Tan Hall, as always, a pleasure to yes. get to see you, my friend. Thank you. Happy New Year to happy you. Happy New Year. Our friend John Chadwell, Newport Economic Development Commission, downtown Newport, and uh, we're off to a roaring start after a great 2014, 2015. We've got it going on. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Doing good deal. Great. And you're right, 2014 was a pretty good year for Newport. Uh, we saw a lot of uh, milestones, a lot of things happen. Uh, people have, uh, have been enthusiastic about some of the growth we've seen in the city over this year. I mean, you're always going to have some setbacks, but there's been some really, some really great things that have happened this year, and 2015 looks to continue and build on that and maybe be even better. Well, we got some things to talk about today that are, that are uh, very important, and anytime we start talking about the art show and what that brings to this community, and I think some people maybe don't understand from, if you don't know and if you've never been here, you're missing out. It's a big time, it's a big time deal. It is. It's one of the largest art shows that, that we have in the state of Arkansas. Uh, we'll have 175 booths, over 180 wow. artists will be here. Last year they sold over $100,000 worth of art in Newport. Of course, we collect sales tax sure. on all that. Sure. And so that's a, that, that's a big benefit to town. Plus, it'll bring I don't know, somewhere around two, 3,000 people into town. They're going to eat. They're going to shop. Absolutely. They're going to be here. And, and one of the big things people don't understand is events like this also give people a better perspective on Newport. Sure. Um, 
when people come to town and they visit Newport, whether they're coming to the college to deal with a program at the college, entertainment, or take a class or something, or they're coming to an event like the art show or Port Fest, or if they can leave with a better attitude and a better idea of what Newport is, then down the road that only helps us because you never know who they run into. And, and the last thing you want is a businessman running into somebody and they say, hey, where are you going? Oh, well, I'm going over to check out putting my business in Newport. Well, why in the world would you want to do that? <laughs> right. You know, you don't want them to say that. Right. What you want them to say is, oh, man, Newport. Well, I was over there for that art show. They got it going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. all the difference in the world in how they arrive at their decision to come here. So it's a big marketing tool. But it's just one of the things that we're working on to make downtown uh, more viable. And I know a lot of people say, well, we want businesses back downtown like they were when we were young. Well, that won't happen. Hard to do, yeah. yeah. Probably well, you, impossible to do. You look at, you look at the, town, the towns that are growing have viable downtowns. Right. You know, you look around Arkansas and, and you look at places like Jonesboro. You look at places uh, like even Heber Springs. Sure. Like places like that. They have a downtown that, that has some businesses, but it also has a lot of entertainment type right. of stuff. And the towns that are really growing are places that have turned their downtown into an entertainment district. Modern retail business want to be on the street where the most traffic goes. Right. Well, how are you going to do that on Front Street? It's kind of a challenge. It's, it's a challenge. you got to so, have an idea. Yeah. you got to have a plan. So what we're going to do is work to make downtown an entertainment district. Right. And part of that is going to be a public initiative that Drive is working on. Um, to take a, several old buildings that are beyond repair. We've applied for grants, can't get them. We're going to bring those buildings down and create a downtown entertainment park. Good. We're looking to put in a permanent stage. We're looking to put in a veterans memorial. We're looking to put in a, a recognition of service that people have done in the community. So, you know, if you want to honor somebody who served on city council, who did this or that, then you can, there will be a place where you can recognize those folks. And then, then we've already got three groups that have agreed that from April to October, they'll do monthly events downtown. Wow. One's wow. KASU in right. Jonesboro has said that starting in April, once a month, they'll bring the blues downtown. Yeah, great. So downtown great. Newport will be a free blues concert people can sit at. Uh, River Country 96.7 has said once a month, they're going to bring local bands downtown. Okay. And so they'll look for bands within a 50 mile radius. They'll bring them downtown and it'll be a free concert. And then uh, ASU Newport has said if we can if we can raise the money to buy the equipment, it's about a sixteen thousand dollar cost uh, we, to get one of these inflatable screens, one of these projectors, sound right. systems, and stuff. Then once a month they'll do movies in the park. Wow! So they'll, they'll pay for the movie, uh, and then they'll provide the staff to blow up the screen and run everything. And so families can come down once a month from April to October for free see a movie. Maybe we'll have. You know, some of the movies cost $175 to show. Some cost $675. Sure. So we probably won't, we'll probably have one or two of the $675 yeah. and some of the $175. But we may show something like Frozen or right. Cars right. or something like that for the kids. And then we may have a, a, a month where we show something that, that's a little more grown up in nature, like a Casablanca or something sure. like that, you know, that folks would enjoy. But it'll be a time for families to come downtown, lawn chair, spread a blanket, sit back, watch a movie on a big screen and do all that. And... And we've got other plans in the future. I, I was just reading of one of the towns that, that bought one of these big screens, and they started a little festival, and it's the Xbox Playoff Competition. You're kidding. And so they've got, they select. We're targeting a younger generation. Yeah, they, yes. select, they select these Xbox games, and then they do a brackets. And so, you know, like you and I might be yes, in a bracket. Yes, double we'd, cool. We'd play each other, and then I'd be eliminated, I'm sure. But I've never win. played, <laughs> but I know these boys of mine play all the time. Yes, and sir. so the next one, until you have the Xbox champion for Newport. Oh, Hunter, that's all right. But the neat thing is that you're playing on a 25-foot screen. So yeah, you're sitting there playing everybody can see. And so everybody what can an see. idea. So there's all kinds of stuff that could happen. Happen, but three, four times a month, there's going to be something going on for free for entertainment in downtown Newport, and uh, and that's going to just really be a big thing. Well, no doubt about that. And, and you've got space, you've got area, you got there. I mean, you can either just let it uh, do nothing with it, or uh, take some effort and and take a plan, implement the plan, and make it worthwhile. I think that's a great idea. Want to talk a little bit about existing industry and and, and what these guys continue to bring to the table. We often talk about, we, everybody always wants to talk about, you know, what's new coming, what's new coming. It's so important to take care of those folks that are here. Well, it is, and we're working right now with 
four of our existing industries, all of whom have expansion plans for next year. And if all of their plans come through, and, and I'm going to say it's 90% likely that all of them will come through, okay? Okay, good deal. A couple of them are 100% right likely. Right already, but, yeah. You know, but it's 90%, and if all of them come through, it's going to be 200 brand new manufacturing jobs in Newport That's in 2015. Right. right. Now, what would we do if we announced a 200 job factory here? Everybody'd be heroes. Yeah, they'd be jumping down. Absolutely. Well, it's it's just as good to get those two. But one of the issues, and this is going to tie back into this downtown stuff, one of the issues that we keep being told by our existing industries is, we got to have the workforce. Right. You know, we got to make sure we can get the workers. And we've got a lot of people working in Jackson County who don't live here. Sure. You know, we need those people living here. We need to have workforce for the jobs we're bringing in. And part of the reason people say don't live in Jackson County is there's not enough to do. Right. So by providing some downtown entertainment options, by providing encouragement, by getting new shopping that we've gotten in over the last year and things like that, that just helps us be more attractive right. for people to come in and live in the county, which then guarantees that factories are going to have employees to hire, and it's just kind of feeds off of cycle, each Cycle, yeah, it's a cycle. So, in there. so we're going to have to be out looking for people to fill these jobs, right. you know, these 200 jobs that are going to be coming in hopefully over the next year. And as we look for those people, we want those people to move and live here. Well, if we want them to move and live here, they've got to know that they can buy a house, sure. that they can educate their kids, that they can have things for their family to do. And so it's our job as a community to improve all of those things. And it's not a process of we've ever arrived. We're going to always be improving those Absolutely. things. Absolutely. And if Absolutely. we can, we can keep growing. Hey, it's good stuff, man. Lots of things going on. Lots John Chadwell and his door is always open in downtown Newport. I mean, you can walk in and you can visit with this man right here. And uh, uh, that's what you're all about is taking care of the folks in uh, Newport and Jackson County. And, hey, I appreciate you, my friend. No Happy New Year to <laughs> Happy you. Happy New Year. John Chadwell, NEDC. Mr. Tommy Allen, Dillinger Funeral Home. In a late start for me in the business spotlight, filming uh, first week in January. We used to do this in December, but for some reason there were some things going on at the end of December. We just couldn't get it done, like holidays. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Good to see you, my friend. Good Let's talk you. a little bit about Dillinger Funeral Home. I know you guys had a, had a, you don't want to say an awesome year, but I mean, as far as taking care of people in Newport and Jackson County, you guys had an awesome year. We made a lot of new friends. Absolutely, you did. Talk a little yeah. bit about it. We just, uh, it was a good year. Uh, the uh, funeral home staff, good health. Uh, you know, the Lord just blessed us, and, and uh, uh, we're just glad to be here. And uh, But uh, uh, we're in a brand new year. Uh, things are doing some changing and uh, making some changes and, and, and progress. Yes, and, sir. And uh, uh, we're just... Uh, uh, ready to meet the new year and, and uh, see see what brings. I know you're excited about it, and uh, we took a little walk through. We've talked about, and you know, over the course of the last couple of years, talking about a remodel project that that you're in full swing and kind of explain to everybody just exactly what we're doing from a physical standpoint here at the funeral home. Well, we we took part of our selection room and uh, added a visitation room okay. uh, on the north end of it, and. Uh, and that's going to allow us to remove a uh, visitation room and give more area, public area, more area for uh, families to uh, visit and gather, more seating area, and uh, widen the halls and, and uh, just, just give us more room that we needed. Well, I think any time that uh, uh, you're in a community our size and you never know, I mean, you build a building, you say this is going to take care of it, and then all of a sudden uh, you have some funerals, you get an overflow crowd, and, 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 and that's good. I mean, that that's means good. people had a lot of friends, and uh, uh, we even witnessed one, you know, this past week or so. And, and uh, uh, talk about the new monitor system that you have displaced throughout the funeral home that I think is, I think is excellent. We, we've had that intact for about a year. Uh, we we went to the fact where we can video and audio our, our services, uh, and and two we have monitors in other rooms of the funeral home that when we have a, a, a funeral when when we have more people than we can seat in our chapel then then you're able to hear and watch and see uh, the funeral and what's going on. Tommy, let me ask you this: and in, in, in coming in when uh, we as people in the community sit down and we, we talk about planning a funeral. Tell us about some of the things that you have to, that you have to, that we don't usually remember. What are some of those tough things that we don't remember that you have to remind us and, and, and tell us, say, well, you know, did you think about this? 
Well, you know, there, there's so many decisions that have to be made uh, in such a short period of time. Uh, it, it, you have to, your music, you know, what songs you want to play and, and uh, do you know who you want to use for pallbearers? Right. Uh, what minister are we using? And, and, a, and a lot of times families have made notes and, and they have some of this down, uh, but, but they don't, you know, do you want to you want to do a video? Do you have some pictures that we can uh, use to uh, do a video slideshow for you? And uh, you know, it, it's just so many details. Uh, cemetery, what what your plot? Sure, number, sure. And uh, somebody has to be there to show them where to mark it. And, and are you? Do you even have a plot? Do you, you have yeah, a plot? Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you do? We need to help you with purchasing a plot. Uh, you know. And this all takes place in a matter of uh, usually about 24 hours. Right, right. Uh, getting the details together. You've got to have a lot of answers because there's a lot of questions. And, and you're in a, a, a mental state that, that you're not able or, or you don't want to be handling a lot of decisions. Um, and, and it's that way with, with every family, you know. Sure. And that's the reason that, that we... Uh, promote our prearrangement. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about it. You bet. Uh, whenever you have a prearrangement and you come in and we sit down and, and we ask these same questions. Right. And But you have time to uh, think about that mm -hmm. and, uh, and we can go ahead and make the selection of, of the merchandise and you say, well, I need a few days to think about the music and, and you know, some particulars if, if we're doing a personalized service that that uh, pays respect to uh, you and and, uh, and reflects the life that you've lived, and 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 you think, well, that's easy. But when you sit down and start putting a pencil to it, yeah, it, it becomes a little more difficult. Yeah, absolutely. But it gives us more time. You're you're in a uh, uh, environment situation where where there has not been a death, right? Uh, so so the emotions is not involved, and and you have more time to take care of of, of specific things that you want to do for the service. Uh, besides the fact that you lock the funeral in at today's cost, um, stop inflation, it's the relief of pressure at the time of at-need service. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, when, when a family comes in and, uh, and we sit down and, and we go all, all over all the information and, and everything's already documented, uh, and, and all we have to do is set a time for the visitation sure. and the service and, and everything else is taken care of. Absolutely. It's so and it's a review. It's just a it, review. Here's, here's, what, here's what we said we wanted. Here's what we did. Let's, right. you, you got any changes here? Yeah. As opposed to, let's go down and let's, let's ask the series of 192 questions yes. that we've got to ask. Those, you know, y'all, we were going to ask them. We got the answers and you go. So. But, but it just, uh, and that's, that's the reason I say that's one of the most loving things you can yeah. do for your family is whenever you take care of all the details yourself ahead of time and it doesn't put the pressure on it. We don't talk about death. Right. Uh, the Bible says we start to die as soon as we're born. Absolutely. But we don't talk about it. Yeah. It's uh, something about the unknown. Yeah. Of, uh, you know, if, if, <laughs> if we was going to buy a new car, my wife and I, we'd sit down and we'd, we'd talk about what our needs are or wh sure. what we want to do or, 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 or what color, you know. But when it comes to a funeral, you're not sitting around the table in the morning with your coffee in your hand saying, no, sir. Well, let's take care of this today. That's correct. That's correct. And it's something that we put off. Uh, but but it is one of the most loving things you can do for your family. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, you guys do it well at Dillinger Funeral Home, no doubt. Our mission is to be a guiding light in stormy times. I think you are, my friend. Tommy Allen, it's always a pleasure to get to come out here and visit with you. Even before we get on the air, I enjoy visiting with you guys and uh, appreciate what you guys bring to our city and our county. Thank you, my Thank friend. Thank you. Tommy Allen, Dillinger Funeral Home. Let's continue on with more of our show. Hi, I'm Sarah Metzger with the University of Arkansas Cooperative Extension Service. I would like to wish everyone a happy new year. Um, we, You have probably heard, um, let me start over. Happy New Year. This is Sarah Metzger with the University of Arkansas Cooperative Extension Service. And today, um, I just want to talk about a few programs that we will have uh, coming up uh, this month in January and also February, March, and April. 
we have another program that will be ongoing um, through February through April, so I'll talk about that in just a minute. First of all, I would like to talk about Living Well with Diabetes. This is a program that will be in collaboration with Harris Hospital. It will be hosted at the uh, Harris Hospital Community Room January 12th. That's on a Monday starting at 11. Um, if you do have diabetes, this will be a wonderful program for you. If you um, have just been diagnosed or you're pre-diabetic, you have gestational diabetes, or you're just a family member wanting to learn more about diabetes, then um, this definitely um, is for you. Um, we recommend that you come. You will learn um, different tips on um, how to meal plan. You'll learn different recipes. We'll do some hands-on cooking demonstrations and samples. Uh, we'll have class activities and we'll have class discussion. Um, we will have Megan Dancer. She is the registered dietitian for Harris Hospi Hospital. She will be on hand to give you some diabetes management tips. Um, she will also be there um, during our multi-sessions, which will be hosted uh, the second Monday of each month, uh, the January, February, March, and April. Uh, she will be on hand to answer any questions that you might have. We would love for you to uh, call the Extension Office at 523-7450 to register, or you can call Rebecca Payro at 512-3081 to learn more about the Living Well with Diabetes program. Another program that we um, will start, actually we've had it uh, the last couple of years here in Jackson County, it's called Walk Across Arkansas. This is an eight-week walk. Uh, eight-week walking program. Um, you do not have to walk, but most teams do. Uh, you can do any sort of physical activity. Remember, it's eight weeks. Um, it starts in February and ends in April. All you need is uh, a team of two to ten people. You need a captain and just pull out those walking shoes. Um, this will benefit businesses, churches, families, really anyone in the community. So hopefully, um, my goal is to have uh, the most teams represented um, in Jackson County for Arkansas. So if you are interested in um, a new year, a new you, this program is wonderful. Walk across Arkansas. Um, you can do any sort of physical activity, um, but like I said, the last couple of years, most teams walk and they keep up with those minutes that they walked. Um, it's easier to keep up with the minutes walk than it is um, to keep up with the miles that are walked each day. To learn more about that, please call me again at 523-7450. I look forward to hearing from you. One last thing, um, we did host our third annual Festival of Trees. This is sponsored by the Jackson County 4-H program. Um, I would first of all like to thank um, NEDC John Chadwell and the Chamber of Commerce um, Ju and Julie Allen and Sh Ms. Shirley Williams. Um, without them, um, this program could not be possible. Um, they helped me to organize the programs and uh, get all the trees set up and so forth. Anything that um, any of the participants need, they are on hand to help them. I would like to um, Talk about our winners for this year's 4-H Festival of Trees. Our overall best tree went to the Jackson County Humane Society. Uh, first place was Harris Hospital. Second place, M&P Bank. Third place, Gillum Feed and Seed. Some other fun things, you can decorate a tree um, in the following four categories. Best business, um, most comical, most traditional, um, and most unique. Those winners were Best Business was Gillum Feed and Seed, Most Unique, M&P Bank, Most Comical, Jackson County Humane Society, and the most traditional went to Lindley Healthcare. If you did not have an opportunity to get out to the NEDC building um, and vote on these trees or just take a look at these trees during Christmas, um, you really missed out. They really did a great job decorating these trees and getting everyone in the Christmas spirit. Um, so if your organization has never participated in the Jackson County 4-H Festival of Trees, we encourage you to start thinking about a tree to put up um, next Christmas. If you have any questions about any of the programs that we talked about today, please call me at 523-7450. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. St. Michael's Place offers 24-hour skilled nursing services to you or your loved ones. Now, we have a team of registered nurses, licensed nurses, and nurses assistants that are dedicated to providing the highest quality of care by working hand-in-hand -hand with our patients and our area doctors. Now, 
We strive to give the best care and have a high state ranking. St. Michael's Place also offers short-term rehabilitation and outpatient therapy. At St. Michael's Place, there are daily activities scheduled for the residents, a variety to choose from. We have bingo, movie, lots of popcorn, church services, live bands, and much more. And St. Michael's Place also likes to hear from our residents and listen to their suggestions. Every resident can participate in choosing activities that suit their lifestyle. At St. Michael's Place, the residents come first. So come and see us anytime to take a tour and see all the exciting new renovations. We're at St. Michael's Place, 1311 North Pecan Street in Newport. Call 523-9514 or 523-5639. Schedule an appointment. Come visit with us at St. Michael's Place, 1311 North Pecan Street in Newport.